Good morning, South. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance with Mr. Barkin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll hear more from him later in the show. Good morning once again, and welcome to the Falcon Report for this Thursday, the 9th of November, a day two. I'm John Lemus. And I'm Kenny Hui. Last Friday was a big day for South here in the building. It was college day. Aiden Ashby joins us for more. Thanks, guys. South's guidance counselors and seniors visited freshman classes to share words of wisdom about their upcoming high school years. Throughout the day, the guests joined the ninth graders English classes. The first portion of this presentation was led by the guidance counselors who addressed the importance of the next few years in terms of college admissions processes with the transcriptors and new opportunities that are offered to them as official high schoolers. Regents exam grades go on your transcript. Colleges see that. The second half of the period was sent allowing the seniors to offer advice to each of the classes, discussing the most useful study habits, the colleges they're applying to, and their favorite classes. I sat down with my teachers and we figured out for myself a schedule when I got home, how to bridge it up. Overall, it was a wonderful opportunity for the class of 2027 to get a sneak preview of what the next four years will look like while gaining important insight from those who were in their shoes not too long ago. And for the Falcon Report, I'm Aiden Ashby. Also Friday, Mr. Lee's AP art class took an exciting trip to the Heckscher Museum of Art. Upon arriving, students took time to appreciate the beauty in the environment around them. Inspired by the park and pond surrounding the museum, each person was able to draw their interpretation of the incredible scenery. Next, students followed a guided tour inside the museum where they had the opportunity to explore two exhibits, Raise the Roof, a home in the art as well as the logbook of Courtney M. Leonard, a Native American from Long Island. The class left the museum not only having gained a new perspective of art, but also far greater insight into Long Island's rich colonial history and indigenous culture. Meanwhile, students in South's science research class were on the road as well, exploring the esteemed library and campus at Garden City's Adelphi University. University attendants gave a guided tour of the campus, showing off a wondrous science department and magnificent architecture. Students stayed at the school library for an hour to look through Adelphi's many databases for research purposes. The visitors then took a brief break for delicious drinks at the school's cafe and proceeded to quickly return to their research. Overall, students had a fun and academically fulfilling trip to Adelphi. Did you hear one of our own teachers ran on the New York City Marathon last weekend? Really? I can't even run a mile. Emily Nolter have had a chance to catch up with Mr. Barkin to hear about this endeavor. Thanks guys, I'm joined now with Mr. Barkin. So how was the marathon? Were you happy with your time and how you ran? I'm always happy with my time. I've done it now 18 times and just getting through it is, uh, is a victory. Um, my faster days are behind me, so I look for people who I know who could use some company on the race. Uh, and this year I ran with a friend. We pulled each other along and I got through it. It's just a big party in all five boroughs and I'm so lucky I could still do this. So can just anybody run in the marathon? How do you have to qualify? Getting into the New York City Marathon can be a challenge because so many people want to do it. Hundreds of thousands of people try to apply to get in, and only a few are chosen by lottery. Some qualify with times, and I'm lucky enough, after my 15th one a couple of years ago, I got guaranteed entry for life. That's kind of a big deal because I've been doing it since 1990. Well, that's really impressive. So how do you prepare for this? Um... Well, a good way to not prepare would be to coach the girls' swimming season and get home at 9.30 most nights and not get a lot of sleep and a lot of time to train. But I train year-round for some of these things. It's something I can keep on doing. So I've heard that you do a lot of other fun athletic events. Can you tell us about some of those? Um... Ironman is, is, is a long day, a lot of training, but again, I found a team of people who are positive and supportive and nobody gets left behind when they're out there training on these long days. My motto is misery loves company and I found a group of people that are great company. It's important for me to be hitting the gym a bit and build up core fitness because it helps everything else work as we age. Well, well thank you so much for joining us. Back to you in the studio. When the Falcon Report returns, we'll learn about festive celebrations. But first, a bird's eye view of our new Little Free Library box. The Falcon Report will be right back. Come 
combine your favorite things. Asian culture! Potluck! And movies. Asian Potlight Movie Night. From this Friday the 17th from 3.30 to 6 p.m. Five dollars or bring food. Beans. Chicken breast. Evaporated milk thing. Oh Mac and cheese. And more. Donate to Family Service Week. Talk to Miss Gordon, Honor Societies, or other clubs for more information. You're a Harlem wizard, Giselle. I'm a what? A Harlem wizard. Last Thursday, the Language Honor Society, led by Mrs. Evola, put on a school-wide Dia de los Muertos celebration. Joining us with more is David Providence. Decorative posters, covered top to bottom in colorful patterns like flowers and skulls, lined the hallways, welcoming students as they entered the school. Spanish classes partook in lively festivities, watching Day of the Dead-themed movies like The Book of Life, and discussed the significance of the holiday. After school, Language Honor Society members met in the library to lead an engaging mask painting activity open to all South students. Finishing strong, South community members left with a deeper understanding and appreciation for the diverse array of global cultures and traditions. And for the Falcon Report, I'm David Providence. Students in Ms. Ellen Daniels' food and nutrition class participated in last week's Halloween festivities by competing in a cake decorating competition. The contest truly put the students' creativity and artistic abilities to the test as they were tasked with spending a period designing a cake. The cake certainly went along with the Halloween spirit, with the designs ranging from Jack Skellington to Spiderwebs. Afterwards, the students shared their work with their peers and the class voted on their favorite cakes. The top three cakes in the class were chosen by the students. After crowning the winners, the class was able to enjoy their delicious creations. Last week, AP Research students got the chance to share their current plans and findings for the year-long research with their peers through their inquiry proposal form presentations. The students have been working diligently since the beginning of the school year deciding on a research topic to focus on for the year and searching for sources pertaining to their area of inquiry. After analyzing the existing body of knowledge within their topic, the young researchers identified a gap in the current research with hopes of filling it with their own findings obtained over the course of this year. During their presentations, students made sure to explain the rationale behind choosing their topics as well as share their current research question and hypothesis and described what methods they plan to utilize when conducting their research. To what extent is internalized racism in Caribbean American New York high school students aged 15 to 18? I'm so glad we don't have school tomorrow. I hope we see some sunny weather for this long weekend. Let's check in with Jonathan Dewey for the forecast. Jonathan? Thanks guys. Although it may not start out sunny, this weekend will develop into bright, clear skies. Today we'll begin with rain, but we'll end with some partial cloud cover extending into tomorrow. Saturday and Sunday will be sunny and breezy. Temperatures will decrease from the low 60s to the high 40s. Enjoy your three-day weekend, South. Back to you in the studio. Some of South's cross-country athletes competed at the state qualifying meet last weekend. Let's check in with Jackson Hunter to see how they did. Jackson? Thanks, guys. It was really a great end to the cross-country team season. Last Saturday, the Falcons took to Bethpage State Park to compete in the state qualifiers, and they sure went out hard. Among a field of the best cross-country runners, South senior Devin Bernard ran in the boys' 5,000-meter run and placed 47th in the entire county with an amazing time of 19 minutes and 11 seconds. Also with an outstanding performance was senior Genity Diamond, placing 57 with a time of 24 minutes and 51 seconds. It was an incredible finish for the seniors as they ended their careers with a powerful showing. And that's sports. That's all for this edition of the Falcon Report. For Kenny Hui, I'm John Lennon. Have a great weekend, Sal. Hey, John, are you busy on Friday, November 17th? You know, yes, I am. On November 17th, 2023, Friday, there will be Asian Movie Night Potluck, where we will watch Kubo and the Two Strings. Please, I want to see 